Hey guys, this is Ron again with Stay Sharp. And a very common question that I seem to get over and over, and I see it in social media, is um, can I shoot left wing fletchings with a right hand single bevel? Or vice versa, can I shoot a left hand single bevel with right hand fletchings? And so I've been working with single bevels since 2007. Uh, exploring their rotation through different medias and their flight and I had pretty much made my mind up on the correct answer was match the fletching to the bevel. Then I get guys calling and say hey I really would like to try this head but they only make it in a right hand bevel. I always shoot left hand fletch. Is it going to matter if I mix match the fletching to the bevel? And again, I tell them, you know, do what you can to make sure that the fletching matches the uh, bevel on the head. Now that's going to exclude some guys from certain heads because if they really love one fletching direction and they can't find a head with that bevel to match, they're out of luck. But I'm getting the question enough that I thought, you know, I, I've made my mind up. A reasonable person would think you'd want to match the fletching to the bevel and logic suggests you would want to keep that fletching spin and bevel rotation spin to match but I've never really tested it so I'm putting together another myth buster video on fletching and single bevels in this case it's going to be a right hand single bevel and a left hand single bevel and I'm going to shoot them both with the same left hand fletching. I've always shot left hand fletching from the days of my trad upbringing and I continue with left hand fletching which excludes me from certain broad heads. Certain guys only make a right hand single bevel. I'm out of luck. But I wanted to put it to the test and in this video I'm going to be shooting through a couple of different mediums to try to keep out any variations. I'm going to shoot both of these uh, right and left bevel with a left bevel or a left spin arrow. I'm going to use the same arrow so I don't have any variations in fletching. But I'm going to explain it in the video uh, in detail exactly what's going on. So hang around and we're going to see have I been right? Have the people been right that said yes match the fletching to the bevel. So stick around. For this evaluation we're going to be using Grizzly Broadheads. This is a right bevel 252. This is a left bevel 252. That just happens to be my preferred. I like to shoot a 250 grain broadhead but one is right bevel, one is left bevel, they're going to share the same arrow. I'll shoot one, unscrew it, put that other head on the same arrow so there's no deviation in fletching, and then reshoot again. So two different heads, one arrow. Both heads will be shot with the same arrow, shooting a left hand helical, so the arrow will be spinning to the left in flight, and then we'll see what happens when it arrives at the target spinning to the left. The total weight of the arrow, again I'm shooting one arrow just switching broadheads because I'm a heavy arrow shooter. Our total weight is 808 grains. The medium I'm going to shoot through is a very wimpy 
eighth inch thick foam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it hanging vertically. So it's going to drape very easy to move, nothing compressed. And I've got 90 layers of this thin material. And I've got a couple layers of a little bit thicker foam, but still very soft foam. And then finally a couple of big layers of upholstery foam. So this whole target is 27 inches deep, but the layers are not compressed. They're vertical. I just didn't want layers horizontally to dictate the rotation. So there's no real grain or structure to the material, this material, muscle type tissue, if you will. And we're going to be shooting this from 30 yards. So the arrow has all the rotation that the fletchings can afford. I wanted to make sure I was getting good rotation when I shoot into the target, but that's the target medium that we're shooting into. All right, I brought the target back to the shop and I laid it flat. Now what I did with both shots is I shot the arrow and then I unscrewed it, pulling only the shaft back out of the target because I didn't want to disrupt the cut profiles. So here is the cut that the left bevel with left hand fletchings make. So as you can always tell by a single bevel you've got that S shape cut profile this is layer one I've just put a piece of black behind it now we're gonna look at the right now this is the right bevel but left hand fletching all right, so you still got the S shape, S shape cut even through the first layer. And there's not much resistance on this foam. It's very thin and wimpy, but we've got an S shape cut um, with the right bevel, but left hand fletching. Now I've peeled the target apart layer by layer and every 10th layer I've marked that layer and pulled it out so I can look at the rotation. Now the final layers were these thick upholstery foam. So here is the second to the last layer and here is the last layer. So on the left hand side we had the left bevel head. On the right hand side we had the right bevel head. Where is the slot? There we go. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay each layer on there to check the rotation that we got layer by layer, which rotated more. They went in about comparable. Maybe the right-hand one went a little bit deeper than the left-hand one. But I'm going to layer these all up on top of each other and make a graphic to kind of show what the results were through this portion of it. Stay tuned.
part one of this evaluation was done through a substrate that offered no resistance or grain structure to cause rotation um, like a layer target would do and now we're going to do another test where we're going to mimic the scapula of a deer so especially the thin part the web and I want to put a bony like structure in the target so I've got a rather brittle bone like material and since it's kind of sheet I'm going to, or a thin sheet I'm going to back it up with some cardboard I'm going to lay that in and around 20 layers in so we'll have it as though it were a scapula inside and then we're going to drape over the top of that a Wisconsin winter whitetail hide so we'll be shooting through the hide a couple layers of the foam so the meat like material and then our bone substitute and we'll see if we get the same results here again is the order of materials for this shot sequence we're gonna have the hide a few layers of flesh our scapula substitute and then the rest will be the layers of foam that we did on the first shot the broadhead was left in the target the left bevel and now I will shoot the right bevel All right, here's the final layer of foam. As I showed, I unscrewed the heads. Here you can see the right bevel head with left fletching went in that deep. The left in left is way, I can't even feel the back of the thread, so I'll have to cut that out of there. So after going through the hide and the bone-like uh, substrates, the matching left-left did seem to penetrate considerably more than the right with the left fletching. things first I showed this video to a few friends of mine uh, who do this sort of thing as well and the first thing they responded back was what was that thing on the end of your arrow that was blinking so I'll address that first what you see here is a telemetry tracking device I've been working with a company to bring this to life and I've used it on a couple of hunts now I'll take it with me to Africa the green is a circuit board there's a couple of LEDs that you saw in the video, two bright orange LEDs. It's designed so that when we pass through an animal, it slips out of the arrow, leaving these two metal barbs to catch on the flesh and hide. The LEDs continue to blink. They're on full during flight, but then go to a strobe mode. And then you use the telemetry device turn it on and it tells you which knock they're numbered how far away it is and what direction you need to go to get to it should the arrow not pass through and the device is stuck in the arrow 
it will continue to emit uh, and the animal runs off with your arrow. So it works either way, pass through or not. But that's what you were seeing. The telemetry device simply leads me to the animal. It increases recovery. And uh, I'm going to link a video. I use this on a hunt in Oklahoma where I was going after whitetail and hogs. And there was one hog in particular I would not have got if I did not have this device on here. We were looking for a black hog at night that wasn't bleeding. I'd hit a little too far forward. Without this device, we never would have found that hog to finish it off. So I knew I was going to get questions about this, but that's what that device is. Well, I hope I broke that down in a manner that made sense to you. Uh, after shooting it, it sure seemed like the conventional wisdom holds and that you do want to match the fletching to the bevel. Uh, certainly in the boneless animal, if you will, the penetration seemed to be about equal. When I introduced a hide and my bone substitute, the matching fletch to bevel really outpenetrated the mismatch. I was surprised that in the boneless version that the fletching really overtook the bevel. I expected that when the broadhead hit, it would overpower the fletching. The flight is done. Now the bevel should control. It didn't. The rotational momentum, if you will, held and it overpowered the bevel of the broadhead nearly all the way through. Uh, I contend that if you were to hit a deer between the ribs with no bones, that it would act like a left bevel broadhead. This target was certainly more rigid or stiff than an animal with fluids in it that we zip through without you know, slowing the arrow down. So I contend that if you were to not hit bones, your right bevel broadhead would spin to the left like a left bevel broadhead, strictly due to the fletching's uh, rotational momentum. When you hit bone, or in my case this mock bone, there was no rotation really at all. Uh, I went through many, many layers with left fletching, right bevel and it acted like a double bevel. It did not rotate whatsoever and that was after crashing through my mock scapula. Um, so I think this myth is uh, upheld in that you want to match fletching with bevel. Uh, is it the end of the world if you don't? No, I don't think so. Especially on small animals like deer, uh, antelope, I don't think that it really matters if you really want to shoot a certain head and they only make it right bevel, but you're a left bevel guy and you don't want to switch. It'll behave like a double bevel. And ultimately, if you put that arrow in the right spot, heart, lung area, it won't matter in the least. But when it does come to bone breaching, and that's the whole you know, hoopla around single bevels is bone breaching, then I contend, yes, you definitely want fletching to match the bevel of the head. But, I mean, you, you saw what you saw. Uh, leave me comments in the uh, area below. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe you saw something different. Um, if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe. We've done several videos, uh, myth busting and other bow hunting science type videos that you might enjoy. There's a ton of broadhead sharpening videos on my channel. So check them out. Like I said, like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy what you see. And thanks for watching.